Hi, I'm Haley Matz, and I'm here with Karen Mills, the Administrator for the Small Business Administration. We're here to talk about what the administration is going to do for small businesses to get them growing and creating jobs and leading us out of this recession. We've been taking email questions all weekend, and we received several hundred of those. And we're also live chatting now on Facebook, and we'd like to keep getting questions from you as we go. Now I'd like to turn it over to Karen to give a little uh, greater overview of what we're going to do here today and on Wednesday. Well, thank you, Haley. You know, I'm Karen Mills. I'm the SBA Administrator, and I am delighted to be here on live chat. We're very sorry to be late. I know one of you said uh, in business you have to be on time, and we all agree with that, but we had to get a few technical things uh, sorted out, and uh, I really wanted to be live and not just do this to tape. So we're going to hear your questions. The reason that we're here is that uh, the President has asked Secretary Tim Geithner and myself to do a forum on Wednesday on small business financing. We know that some of you out there have fabulous, viable small businesses and that you really have been struggling to get access to credit, to figure out how to grow your business in this particularly difficult economy. And so we want to hear what you're thinking, what your concerns are. I'll try to ask uh, answer some of those questions now and ask uh, some of the colleagues that are going to join us on Wednesday for some more insights uh, when we all meet together. So this is a way to broaden things out and even if you can't travel to Washington to be with us to hear some of your thoughts. So Haley's going to uh, help me out by uh, giving me some of your questions. Well, before we take some of the ones from, uh, from Facebook right now, I thought we'd start with one from this weekend, which was a question from Maine as uh, your home That's state. Great. Carol Graham uh, owns a small business in Augusta, Maine, and she wants to know what can be done to help them get a line of credit or a loan. They employ 120 Mainers, and they could employ more, but they cannot expand. Well, in Maine, 120 Mainers employed is a very important business to us, as, uh, um, as it would be all across the country. And this is a, a, a very good time, I think, for me to tell um, you all a little bit about some of the things that the SBA has to offer. Uh, you probably all know about some of our loan guarantee programs, 7A, 504, um, but you may be less familiar with some of our counseling operations. And sometimes when you have a good viable business and you're trying to figure out how to grow and how much additional debt or financing uh, to take on and how to do it, you need a counselor. So to all of you out there, if you do not have a long-term relationship with a counselor who is advising you about your business, you should. We have 900 small business development centers around the country. 350 chapters of SCORE are retired executives and over 100 women's business centers. The counselors there are trained and the counseling is free. So I encourage you, uh, come on our website and uh, we'll get you connected to uh, some of the counseling. This next question comes from Chuck Blakeman from Denver, Colorado. And he's interested in the President's announcement of increasing 7A loans from $2 million to $5 million. He wants to know how this will help uh, businesses and whether the banks are on board. Well, I was in Denver and actually talking to some of the bankers out there and hearing about some of the businesses actually who are looking for somewhat larger loans than we currently can do. At the moment, when you look at our loans, many, many people ask for our loans right up at the top limit, the $2 million mark. This doesn't mean that we will walk away from the smaller loans, because really our average loan size is, is uh, much smaller, $100,000, $300,000. dollars But we want, particularly in these um, difficult environments, to also to be able to help um, some of the larger businesses. This would be manufacturers. Also, franchisees have come to us and said sometimes they need a larger loan limit when they expand from uh, one franchise to buy a second and maybe a third. And that has been uh, partly the, one of the motivating factors of one of the interesting groups um, that has said that they will be able to uh, make good use of a higher limit. Um. Renee Arnold is asking about the ARC program. She says that Chase has 
uh, been participating, but that um, not to the level that she was hoping. And she wants to know what can be done to get Chase and other lenders on board with the ARC program. Well, Renee, let me um, talk about the ARC program for a minute. And then separately, I want to tell you some exciting things that Chase just announced last week in case you missed it. The ARC program came to us with the Recovery Act back in February. And it is a very important $35,000 loan, 100% guaranteed by the SBA. It's a very particular loan. It is for a business that is struggling in this environment and can kind of prove that it is having a tough time, but can also show us that it is viable because you don't want to take on another $35,000 if you're not going to be able to have a pathway to pay it back. And we ask you to um, show us that pathway by showing us uh, quarterly cash flows for two years in the future. And I know everybody out there who's got a small business, I know you know how to think forward in your quarterly cash flows. It's a really good discipline. So when you come in and you look for these ARC loans, um, you'll know that those are the criteria. It is to pay down uh, debt that you have um, and be able to have uh, an interest-free loan. The bank gets the interest, but the SBA pays it. So it's interest-free to you. You don't have to worry about repaying it at all for a year. And then the repayment schedule lasts over five years. So that's what um, is going on with ARC. And um, I'll tell you just one story about an ARC lender that uh, made a loan, I think, last week that I think it typifies what an ARC loan might be about. This is a company that is in the construction business. And it was doing pretty well, but it is a sub for a larger construction company. And this company wasn't getting paid. So one of its suppliers, uh, who also wasn't getting paid, said, I'm putting a hold on all your bank accounts. This company was able to go to their bank, get an ARC loan, pay down its supplier, unstick the whole process, and get the uh, materials that it needed to continue supplying the bigger supplier. So it's for difficult circumstances where the company is, is still going to be on the path to success. I did want to also tell you one thing about uh, Chase. Last week, Chase announced that they are going to put $4 million into small business loans. And you might uh, look to your Chase bankers um, to see if uh, they have uh, some additional personnel and some additional opportunities now for some of you businesses. So we're really welcoming that, that uh, investment by uh, J.P. Morgan Chase. This is a question from Carolyn Sawyer. And she's wondering how banks and lenders are going to be monitored to ensure that they are lending to small businesses. And this actually touches on some of the topics in Wednesday's forum. Well, you know, our programs at the SBA are for small businesses. They're not for big businesses. So we have standards, size standards, um, to ensure that your business is uh, not a big business. Mas masquerading is a small business. When you get your loan, uh, there's a process by which it's certified that you are a small business. And we do go back and make sure those, those things are the case. There's different sizes for different businesses. So if you're a manufacturing company, uh, you might have a different number of employees and still be small than if you're an accounting firm. So the banks and the SBA website can tell you all the size standards. And as for Wednesday's forum, who is going to be invited? Will small businesses be a part of it? Yes, small businesses are coming. And we're going to um, mix it up a little bit. We're going to have small businesses. We're going to have bankers. Uh, we're going to have folks from the SBA there and from the Treasury Department. We are going to also invite um, people from the community and uh, from the regulatory community as well. And we're going to hear a whole variety of views. This is really a terrific opportunity. It is uh, also going to be uh, on the web live. So. Hopefully, if you can't come, uh, you'll get a chance to watch. We've talked a lot about lending. So how about this question from Chris, Chris Gunn? And he is wondering um, what can be done in the contracting department to stop the diversion of small business contracts to some of the larger businesses? 
At the SBA, we're responsible to make sure that 23% of all federal contracts go to small businesses. And that's about $100 billion a year. So we have people who work with every single federal agency. And they do all kinds of things. They do matchmaking events between small businesses and the Department of Defense or the Department of Energy or the Department of Commerce. And we help bring uh, the opportunities to the small businesses. We have criteria, uh, size standards. So if you're not a small business, um, you can't get these contracts and you can't get these opportunities. Before I move on to the next question, I just wanted to clarify, judging from some of the comments on, on our Facebook chat, that when you're talking about the Chase Lending Program, it's $4 billion that they're committing and not $4 million. Sorry, did I say that? It's $4 billion, yes. Um, on another SBA topic, um, Dave wants to know what the activity is like in the SBIC program and what's been changing over the past few years. The SBICs are our small business investment companies, and that is an opportunity for us to get other kinds of uh, capital into the hands of small businesses, particularly businesses that need um, capital to grow. So over the years, we've provided capital to companies like Intel and Ben and & Jerry's and FedEx and Staples, all through these SBIC operations. We have a... Uh, new gentleman running that operation named Sean Green. And uh, we have a very intense effort to streamline the process. We just announced a fast track process. So if you have been an SBIC before, we have a much shorter turnaround for approvals. And we are going to be um, uh, looking at even more ways that we can get money out through these investment companies because we know there's a lot of entrepreneurs out there whose capital sources have dried up, and uh, we think there's probably a lot of good growth opportunities and job-creating opportunities in those small, high-growth companies. Well, after talking about some of the high-growth companies, um, Hugo Rizzo is wondering about the mom-and-pop stores in America, the Main Street stores, and he wants to know about tax relief for them. Is there anything in sight? Well, as I uh, was just saying, we have lots and lots of small businesses in this country. And, but one size doesn't fit all. And at the SBA, we really deal with all kinds of small businesses. So for Main Street small businesses, we um, have our loan programs, like our 7A and our 504. But we also help them with government contracting. We also help them with regulatory issues. And this is something that um, uh, you all might have some interest in, we have a whole office of the Omnibudsman who is there to help you if there's a particular issue you have in terms of regulations or in terms of conflicting regulations between uh, different agencies and you need some help to uh, wend your way through. So we welcome on a case-by-case -case basis uh, helping you with some of the issues you might have, whether it's taxes or it's uh, regulation, and uh, we'll see if we can't provide um, some kind of pathway to get some of those issues resolved. Do you think this is something that will also come up on Wednesday with all of our partners in the same room? All the issues that are important to small business I think will come up on Wednesday. The focus of Wednesday though is really small business financing. In this time in the economy, um, the president has come forth uh, with a proposal to Congress um, on uh, in connection with the SBA to raise our limits to $5 million. We have um, talked about some additional programs with uh, CDFIs, and um, those discussions led to wanting to have a more open forum so that we can hear what's going on in the marketplace, that we can get lenders and small businesses and regulators together and see what the opportunities are to do even more things that will help create jobs and grow those businesses. William Henderson has a question about SCORE, and he wants to know for those businesses that are trying to get off the ground, and they're always asking about grants, what about microloans? Well, there's a couple things you just mentioned. The first is SCORE. SCORE is our network of over 12,000 retired executives. And if you're interested in counseling and you have a particular business, I bet there's a SCORE executive who's been in that business 
sometime in the past. And you can get on the SCORE website or you can come through our website and you can actually do online counseling. And you never know, the person who's in that business might be able to get you connected with the right folks or the right distributors um, or just give you some good advice about your particular business. So that, um, that's, that's one of the things that SCORE does. If you are looking to start your business, it would be um, a good thing to have a conversation with one of our micro lending intermediaries. And once again, you can find out who those are in your area. There's over 100 of them. But we give out microloans up to $35,000 to new and emerging companies. Sometimes if you have you know, a cookie shop you want to start, um, that can be a microloan possibility. Or it may be the next high growth, high impact, you know, high tech business. So those are our um, microloans. And they are available uh, through our microlending agencies and also through our district offices. If you get in touch with us, we'll be able to uh, put you together. Kevin has a question about our uh, Recovery Act money, and he says that small businesses have only received 1% of the stimulus money. But I think this is a good opportunity to talk about all that the SBA has done. In fact, at the SBA, we have really been able to get the money out into the hands of small businesses. So we were given about uh, $355 million to increase our loan guarantees to 90% on 7A and to reduce or eliminate most of our fees. And the situation looks like this. Back in October, as you all know, credits froze. And our lending and everybody's lending just plummeted. We bounced around the bottom for a while, and right in February, when the Recovery Act was passed, and we were able to institute these new guarantees and uh, fee reductions, our loan volume has gone straight up, um, a real hockey stick. And we're now above our 2008 and 2007 levels. So we have been able to put $12 billion into the hands of small business. That's over 1,200 banks that are back lending SBA loans that had not made a loan since the market froze in October. And half of them had not made a loan since the previous 2007. So for now, we really have put uh, almost 100% of our, our, our Recovery Act money out into the hands of small business, getting lenders back lending, getting small businesses the access to capital that they need. Well, Joel has a question about um, how to get the banks back on board, how to get them lending, and wants to know if some of our paperwork is too cumbersome or whether the bank's paperwork is too cumbersome to actually get people participating. So we're working on our paperwork. Um, and in fact, we have uh, been able to take our recovery, uh, our turnaround times for our loans way down. So now between five and 10 days turnaround for many loans and um, Sometimes if the bank has already approved the loan, that loan gets turned around by us even in just a day. We still are working on making sure we've got the right balance between getting enough paperwork so we make sure we're being a good steward of taxpayer money and we know that we're making a good credit risk and uh, not having so much paperwork that it's, it's too difficult. So any suggestions on that, our guys are listening and we really would be happy to know what could be improved. Here's another contracting question. Um, Mike Racine would like to know what can be done about subcontracting? And are there any guidelines or enforcements in place to make sure that subcontracts go to small businesses? And also, how can they find out about these opportunities? Well, subcontracting is a very important um, part of what is coming out in the Recovery Act. And we're actually starting to track that. And you'll be able to get to that on our website in the Recovery Act website. We're starting to do an inventory of all the subcontracts. So you might not qualify for the prime contract, but we'll still try to get you together with uh, some of the subcontracting opportunities. And then I think we have time for one last question today. Okay. And so we're going to take it from Joanne. And she wants to know what you're going to do to work and inspire local, lender, local leaders to work with their communities to create jobs. And will leaders from small communities be at the forum? Well, I come from a small community. So I really understand what uh, she's talking about. 
it's very important if we're going to come out of this recession that the community is strong and the community supports each other, that the banks support the businesses, that the businesses support each other, that there uh, is really a, what we call linked, leveraged, and aligned, that everybody is uh, helping each other get to the right set of opportunities. I've been traveling around the country now um, since July, I've been out pretty much every week, and I've been in all corners of the country. And I know one thing, which is that the American small business person is resilient, is working really hard to stay in business, to find opportunities, and to create jobs. We are going to provide every tool that we can in this administration. The president is fully committed to small business. When he was... Um, out announcing with us at, um, we were at uh, Small Business in Maryland, and we were in the warehouse, and the boxes were up to the ceiling. And he uh, talked about some of the new initiatives we were doing. Then he asked uh, Tim Geithner and I to um, have this forum, this conference, and listen to you some more. And then he said something at the end. And he, he said this himself, it wasn't in his, in his speech, but he said, I know how difficult it is um, in, this in these economic times. He said, I cannot imagine the difficulties that you as small businesses are facing. But I promise you this, he said, this administration is committed to small business. You are our highest priority because we know when you succeed, America succeeds. At the Small Business Administration, and at this forum on Wednesday, we're going to be listening hard. We're going to be taking more of the thoughts and suggestions that you have, and we're going to work very hard to make sure that you, the small businesses, have the tools that you need to grow, to create jobs, and to help America prosper. So it's been a delight to be here. Thanks, Haley, for doing this with me. And Thank don't you. forget to tune in on Wednesday at whitehouse.gov if you aren't able to come to Washington.